All right, guys, here's a front differential off a Razor 800. Sorry about the noise. Uh, it's really cold outside. It's, you know, probably zero degrees or so, so I got to have the heater in the shop going. Um, but here's a differential, and I pulled it apart. As you can tell, the fluid in here looks really good. Um, originally, when I was spinning this, uh, basically these hubs here would turn, at least the driver's side. So this is the driver's side, the opposite side would be the passenger side. Um, and every once in a while, you can, if you look at this here, it's starting to spin it, as you can tell right now. And it shouldn't be doing that. So it's still doing whatever the heck it's doing, and it's causing it to spin just very slightly right now, which is not a big deal, I wouldn't think, but obviously there's an issue because it shouldn't be doing that. So um, here is the armature plate. And the wear pattern looks normal. You know, you have an inner and an outer, basically, of where those uh, contacts rub. This is the coil, and it magnetizes this armature plate, would be my assumption. It grabs this cage that's down inside here, and then it um, pulls it apart. Or, sorry, uh, pulls it together, forcing those roller bearings. Gosh, and that is just a tight, tight fit. Oh, there we go. You know, that's a really tight fit, so that... Um, it does concern me. Like I said, it's really tight. Here's the bearings that are just about to pop out in the roller cage. Um, it's going to make a mess everywhere. I really don't want to take this back apart, but at this point, I guess it doesn't matter. I'll show you guys how this is done. So these bearings just come out of this cage here. They're friction fit with uh, some springs. This is the first time I've ever tore into one of these, but I do a lot of mechanic stuff on the side and you know it's not hard to figure how something works so i'll pull these all out just to make sure i didn't empty the cage full of fluid which i should have did but like i said um, i just put fluid back in it and uh, put it back together and everything looked fine i didn't see anything wrong with it so there's the first set of rollers you pull it out and if you pull it out too quickly all the rollers will just go everywhere here's the bottom rollers and I'll inspect all these again just to double check but like I said I mean it looks I mean new would be the best way I could describe it I mean it looks great there's not a problem with anything in here that I saw initially but you know it doesn't hurt to give it a second glance and see if maybe I missed something and I knew if I pulled them out too quickly I'd have a couple stuck down in there so here's the cage and as you can tell those H clips all seem to be in there good I don't see any that are cracked the case looks to be fine um, I don't see where the stamping is you guys were talking about online I guess uh, somebody was saying if this was a zinc cage from the factory and not an aftermarket one it would be stamped with something I don't see any stamping of any numbers or letters or any type of stamping in the cage so I'm assuming this is aluminum and not zinc um, based off that there's a couple dots that look like probably from the machining process and not a stamping I guess is what I would assume that is let me try and get these out of here I just have one more down here I gotta get out and um, this fluid is gonna go everywhere if I move so this is the bottom hub that controls the other axle and there's just like this um, they're friction fit, right? You have like a, a cup and they go in together and that's how these two hubs on either side sit and they spin. So it's basically a spacer or however you want to look at it, but that's how it's designed to engage those so they both move. So like I said, the, the cage looks fine. The springs don't seem warped. The rollers look excellent. Um, you know, this is a plastic piece that comes off. You want to make sure this aligns with your springs. It has like a little notch area where you want them to sit between. And you'll know because once you get it there, you can't move it side to side. So, I mean, everything looks fine. I don't see the issue. Um, the only other thing is maybe this is magnetized more than I thought. You know, I tried like my screwdriver or something, and it's fine. I mean, I can get all the fluid off there. But if it was magnetized enough, um, it would probably pull something really small like a paper clip I would assume and I just don't happen to have one Let me check my bench real quick. See if I have something in here. That's smaller Well this feeler gauge is pretty thin metal So if I was to get you know 
a really small metal one. There we go. Let's see if I can. No, it feels fine. I mean, it it has to go through the fluid to magnetize whatever you're magnetizing on the opposite end, anyhow. So I don't need to clean all the fluid off, right? It's going to be normally run like this with the fluid in it. So I don't think it's magnetized either. And like I said, I pulled it apart just like this earlier, and I just basically inspected it and put it back together, and uh, it worked just fine after that. It wasn't engaging the hubs. So like I said, I haven't applied power to it. You know, there are some springs that maybe they aren't pinched down far enough. I don't know. 